Including Stylet Oil in your crop management rotation is an environmentally safe and effective way to protect your grapes against mite infestation. So be sure to visit www.styletoil.com today. Are you having trouble with the leaf-footed bug in your pistachio orchard? Well, I'm Matthew Malcolm with Pacific Nut Producer Magazine, and here today at the annual Statewide Pistachio Day in Visalia, UC IPM advisor Chris Tollerup reported that this pest can cause substantial damage to the pistachio crop. And here Chris is to talk a little more about this pest and how to monitor it. The leaf-footed bug is uh... A very can be a very very serious pest. It's a, it's a caridid. It, it gets its name from the leaf type uh, flatness of its uh, femur and tibia, and it's a very very large bug, and it can cause significant damage in both almonds and pistachio. What its life history is is that it overwinters in these large aggregations outside of the orchard. Uh, in the spring, when it starts to warm up, they'll start to move. When the nuts become vulnerable in the spring, and, and I think in the almonds, it's uh, in April, they can be very, very important to start monitoring for the leaf-footed bug. Start. And as of yet, we don't really have any economic thresholds or a way to monitor, a set way to monitor. The, personally, the way that I like is using about an eight-foot pole to go into the orchard. When it's, it's, it's in late morning, you can tap the upper branches of the tree you walk on so that the sun is behind you. And then you can see the presence of leaf-footed bug by tapping those upper branches and then they fly. Uh, they'll move out of almonds into pistachio later in the season, beginning in May, and uh, then they become a, a, quite a concern in, in pistachio. What's interesting, Kent Dana has done a considerable amount of work looking at how cold temperatures can affect leaf-footed bug populations. He found that uh, around 22 degrees um, or what he calls is bad temperatures that are bad for citrus are bad for leaf-footed bug. In 2013, late 2013, we had some very very cold temperatures at least right in the in where I'm where I work at the Parlier station uh, in Fresno that dropped down to around 22 degrees, 21.5 degrees for a couple of hours. And that seemed to be enough time at those cold temperatures to really adversely affect the following year population in 2014. And as far as I understand, talking to quite a number of pest control advisors, leaf footed bug, as well as other stink bug species, uh, were not a problem. However, the caveat is that later in the season, in fall, we saw some considerable populations. And now, uh, this could be a, a, a harborage for uh, heavy leaf-footed bug populations in this upcoming season. One of the best ways to monitor for leaf-footed bug is to locate an aggregation and then see when it starts to move. That's not always possible. I think the best way to monitor is early in the season, in April, start looking uh, for leaf-footed bug damage and using the pole method. And that way you can, you can consult with your pest control advisor as to what type of action you should take place, uh, should use to control the leaf-footed bug. The only compounds that we have thus far that are effective looks to be like the pyrethroids. Uh, that's unfortunate. We're looking for pyrethroid replacements at this time, but we haven't really put a pin in that and found something that's very, very effective like the pyrethroids. Thank you, Chris.
The leaf-footed bug was just one of the many topics addressed at the annual Pistachio Day. Read about these topics in Pacific Nut Producer Magazine and watch other interviews with speakers from today's event on California Agnet YouTube channel. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.